You ask, we answer. Once again, Dr. Saeed Hussein of Trinity Health in New England joining us over Zoom this morning to answer some of the questions that you all sent in. Doctor, good morning. Thanks once again for being with us. We do appreciate your time. Morning. Thank you for having me. All right, we have a question here from Carrie. She emailed us and she wants to know, is it safe to not wear a mask, social distance or quarantine for 14 days if I did get both shots? She got both of her vaccines. So for all intents and purposes, my answer to that question would be yes, you still have to mask up, distance, practice public health measures. There are two circumstances that the CDC released new updated guidance on those individuals that are now fully vaccinated that was released. And the first uh, scenario is fully vaccinated people. And by that, I mean those individuals that have received uh, the second dose and it's been two weeks or greater for the Pfizer or Moderna vaccine. And if it's the Johnson and Johnson or Janssen vaccine, then it's the first and only dose. And it's been two weeks or greater after they've received the dose. Those individuals may choose to not wear masks or distance when they're in the company indoors of other fully vaccinated people. The second scenario is uh, fully vaccinated individuals may choose not to wear a mask or distance with individuals who are unvaccinated living in the same household, but low risk for COVID-19 disease. So there are only two exceptions to that rule of masking and distancing, with, which folks need to be aware of. The other is, thing is, if an individual is exposed to someone with COVID-19 disease, and they remain asymptomatic, but they're fully vaccinated, they may forego uh, quarantine and testing. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, now, the next question that we want to get to is actually one uh, from Rose, who wrote in to say, my mother went from the hospital to a short-term nursing facility where she was given her first shot. She's still there and is unable to get the second because the facility is no longer giving them. And because she's non-ambulatory, she can't get up and move around. They're not able to transport her via ambulance to get the second dose. What options does she have to get that second dose? So Rose, please reach out to the facility where your mother is currently at and have the facility reach out to the local health department or the Department of Public Health because then they can work with healthcare systems to set up a pop-up clinic or arrange some sort of mechanism where the second dose can be administered. It is critically important she receives the second dose. It's three weeks for Pfizer and four weeks for Moderna, but in exceptional circumstances, the CDC does allow for up to six weeks. So I, I'm not sure based on the question how long it's been since she received the first dose. Nonetheless, please have the facility reach out to either the local health department or the Department of Public Health uh, for Connecticut so that we can arrange something and they can, they can work with a healthcare system to arrange vaccination. All right, we have another one here from Lisa. Lisa wrote in, when the governor speaks of the numbers of those who are fully vaccinated, who refers to first dose, second dose? With the Johnson & Johnson vaccine being only one dose, are the recipients of that vaccine included in the fully vaccinated group? And is the J&J &J vaccine considered a full vaccination even though it has a lower efficacy rate. So the Johnson & Johnson vaccine is on par with both Moderna and Pfizer. Uh, individuals are fully vaccinated after they've received the first and only dose for Johnson & Johnson, but it, fully vaccination means it needs to be two weeks or greater, and it's a second dose two weeks or greater for Pfizer and Moderna. Please keep in mind the Johnson & Johnson vaccine has high efficacy in terms of preventing hospitalizations and deaths, that's severe disease. So all of us need to be um, aware of what the facts are and roll up our sleeves when it's our turn to get vaccinated to put an end to the pandemic. Uh, what do we know about side effects with the Johnson & Johnson vaccine? I know there were some absences from uh, Colchester Elementary School as a lot of teachers got those. And we believe those were the Johnson & Johnson ones there. I know we've talked about Pfizer and Moderna with the second shot, especially sometimes being a doozy. What do we know about Johnson & Johnson? So, Tim, the uh, side effect profile for the Johnson & Johnson vaccine is very similar to Moderna and Pfizer. So folks can expect... Uh, to, to experience uh, injection site pain, redness, swelling. They may get a low-grade fever, body aches, um, joint aches, n lasting not more than 24 to 48 hours. Um, that's mild to moderate in intensity. Uh, my advice to folks is please do not pre-medicate yourself with <laughs> Tylenol, Advil, or Aleve before getting the vaccine, I, any of these vaccines. 
But if you do experience side effects, then you may choose to take Advil or Tylenol. Um, and again, it's, it's a similar uh, profile to Moderna and Pfizer. So the other piece of advice is when you're scheduling your vaccine appointment, whether it's Johnson & Johnson or the other two, please try to uh, schedule that appointment on a day when you know the next day you'll be off or it's the weekend. So if you do develop side effects, uh, you may get some rest. Okay, right. uh, Dr. Hussein, thank you so much for all of that information. We do appreciate the time uh, you've taken for us. Thank you very much. And for the very latest information about the COVID-19 vaccine, all you have to do is text the word vaccine to the number right there on your screen. 860-527-6161 and your audience.